Good morning, and welcome to St. Louis, Missouri for the 2017 DOTUS Worldwide Conference. My name is Janice Glover-Jones, Chief Information Officer at the Defense Intelligence Agency, and it's wonderful to be here. I'm honored and privileged once again to host this premier conference. I want to extend my sincere thanks to the City of St. Louis, the American Center, and all the attendees for making this year's conference the best one yet. We have distinguished guests, plenary speakers, and breakout presenters, and the next few days are sure to be valuable and exciting. I am pleased to see so many familiar faces from across government, military, and industry. It's also inspiring to see so many new faces in the audience, including 56 new DOTAS Worldwide Conference exhibitors listed beside me. I hope that your engagement reflects the importance of this year's theme, dominating cyberspace against persistent threats. This year's conference is significant as it contours the technological landscape that are continually altering our future. The defense intelligence enterprise is at a pivotal moment. The scope of the threats and attacks that our nation face continue to evolve and expand in unpredictable ways. Advanced nation states, small isolated countries, transnational groups, and even long actors unconstrained by international borders and rules are maliciously taking advantage of these disruptive technologies. They are acting in a manner and at a speed that cannot surpass our efforts. We are in a new area, era where cheap and readily available technologies have increased the capability to capitalize on, exploit our technical expertise. The potential to cause harm in today's digitally connected world is inherent in everything that we do. Today, children grow up with smartphones in their pockets, a reservoir of digital knowledge that is second nature, and the technological footprint that was non-existent when many of us in the room were young. As the world becomes more interconnected, the same technologies that enrich our daily lives, like digital thermostats and smart refrigerators and virtual assistants, also presents serious cyber vulnerabilities. And that is why we cannot be satisfied to simply prepare for, monitor, and defend against these threats. We must proactively dominate cyber threats through speed, agility, and strength. And I know many of you have heard the dire warnings about cyber vulnerabilities before, such as Petya and WannaCry attacks. But before we continue, I would like to share with you a visual depiction of the scope and the magnitude of the dramatic cyber threats we face. If this video next to me seems like science fiction or a conceptual vision of the future, then you should prepare yourself to be disruptive. These are mere samples of the cyber attacks that are taking place every second throughout the world. It is estimated that in 2016, one billion accounts and records worldwide were compromised and more than 4,000 ransom attacks occurred every day. This amounts to a 300% increase since 2015. And if you believe that traditional technologies and methods can, against, can defend against the magnitude and the volume of these cyber threats you see unfolding in this video, you are at risk. Now that we've seen a depiction of the scale of the threats we face, it is equally important to focus on how these threats have morphed. It is imperative that we shed our preconceived notions of who poses a threat to our networks and our digital infrastructure. Today's sophisticated hackers use simple electronic devices like remote control cars or other smart toys to gain access to our most sensitive data. Skilled cyber actors don't need to spend years or decades honing or refining their craft to inflict severe damage. For example, a five-year-old recently found a flaw in an Xbox video game system that allowed him to hack into his father's account. 
and a 10-year-old discovered a new class of bugs in a mobile game allowing her to manipulate the results. While these might not sound like dire threats to national security, they should be instructive to the digital world we now inhabit. Malicious cyber actors can come in any shape and size, and we must adapt to this new reality. I would like to introduce to you someone who personifies this technological information and represents the sophistication of cyber actors. He is the CEO of a cyber nonprofit as well as a cyber expert all at the age of 11. Please welcome Ruben Paul. Good morning, Ruben. Thank you. Where's Bob? Why don't you go ahead and get started? So Ruben, okay. we'll find Bob. He's okay. not lost. 11 years old, you're the CEO of a company. You consider yourself a cyber expert. And then you do gymnastics. Yes. All at the age of 11. How did you get here? Uh, well, before I answer your question, uh, I just wanted to say a big thank you. I wanted to thank my God, Jesus Christ, for the gifts he has given me and giving me this opportunity. I want to thank you, Ms. Glover Jones, for letting me share the stage today. And I want to thank all the people who are serving today and all the people who have served, the veterans, and all the attendees here. Um, and I hope one day to serve our nation just like you on the cyber wall. Thank you. Now back to your question. Um, it all began when I was about six years old. And um, my dad uh, used to train people on cybersecurity. So I used to listen in and learn about basic security topics. And um, one day when he was on a business call, he forgot the word firewall. So I prompted him from the back and he realized I had a potential for learning cybersecurity. So he started teaching me more advanced topics like uh, hacking phones and uh, windows and uh, uh, IOT devices. Mm. So um, I started learning and I had to, I was simplifying uh, advanced topics down so that anyone could understand them. And that's how I came up with Cyber Shaolin, my nonprofit organization. Yeah, nonprofit organization. So tell us about Bob. Who is Bob? So this here is Bob, meet Bob. So Bob is a bear of breeches. A so bear of breeches. That's why I named him Bob. Uh, he got okay. something to say? Huh? Yeah, he has a little message for us. Hey, Dotus Worldwide, this is Bob. I just wanted to say hi. How are you all doing? I'm really excited to be here today. Thanks for the opportunity. So, what do you use Bob for? Most people sleep with teddy bears. Well, but I, I gather that you're not most people. Well, I, I'm going to hack into Bob. You're going to hack into Bob? Yes. Okay. You're going to show us what you got? Yes. Okay. So I basically have a Raspberry Pi, a mini computer. I'm connecting through it. I'm connecting to it using terminal and uh, just on my Mac. And I'm going to use, uh, and I'm just going to scan for my Bob. So um, here you go. Wow. Oh, let me turn my phone off because you can really hack it. <laughs> That is a lot of things. I see someone's Fitbit charge HR. Uh, select someone's device like an Apple Watch. Oh, there, there's Bob. Let's see him. He's at Cloud Vets. Now you make sure it's Bob. Yes. And not General Stewart's phone, okay? Okay. I need my job. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you're trying to turn off your Bluetooth devices, it's too late. <laughs> So I'm just going to connect to the bear interactively. And uh, once I do that, I'm going to uh, see these services. So the first two are, for, uh, are on Bluetooth specs. And uh, it's basically for interactive, uh, interactively connecting between the bear and the device. The last one is for over the air updates. And this one is specific to the manufacturer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, in each of these services, there is characteristics, properties that you can use. So I'm basically just going to uh, describe the characteristics. So once I get this characteristics, I see that 
the, uh, I, ha I went through each one, and there's a specific one, handle 27. But I'm going to actually read handle 28 because that's the description for the handle. So when I do it, I'm going to do character dash read handle 28. And we get these three, or these, uh, these numbers. That's a hex. So I'm just going to go into Python and put that in and on exit. How did you learn Python? Uh, I've been taking, uh, uh, I have a book at home, Python for Kids. So Self-taught, OK. Yeah. Um, so I have LED. So handle 27 controls the LED. So basically, I'm just going to write to that handle. And I'm going to write handle to handle 2701. So now as you see on Bob, the LED, this little heart LED will flash. Wow. So I'm gonna turn that off, and who just wants to see a light turn on? I'm gonna make some audio play. So I went through each one of these, and I found that handle 12 is for commands, mm -hmm. sending commands to the bear, and 08 is for audio, um, and then uh, zero two is for record, and it records to slot one automatically. There are a few different slots, but it records to slot one. So when I enter this command, Bob is going to record everything I say, and nobody's going to know it. So once I enter it, Miss Glover Jones is going to ask me a question, or ask Bob a question. I'm going to answer it for Bob, and then you guys are going to scream, "Dotus is awesome!" Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey, Bob. Have you just been hacked? Yes, I was. So I just turned it off. And to play it back, I'm going to do 0801. And I'm going to play back on slot 1. Hey, Bob, have you just been hacked? Yes, I was. Hmm. So, if you were a nefarious cyber actor, what could you do with Bob or any other smart tooth enabled device? So, I could act, theoretically stand out any government institute base and connect to a Bluetooth low energy device like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or something like that. And then I could record secretive conversations. Or if I was, uh, or I could stand out a doc outside a doctor's office and connect to a heart pacemaker and turn it off making some, causing some serious damage. So ladies and gentlemen, what we just witnessed is in about five minutes, Ruben here was able to hack into Bob and record our conversations. This is the reality of what we live in. And we want to say thank you, Ruben, for coming and sharing with us how easy this is. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got something for you. OK? We'll bring it. I get it. <laughs> Let's give Ruben another round of applause. Fortunately for all of us, Ruben is one of the good actors. However, there are thousands of individuals around the world striving to obtain Ruben's skill set in order to use their knowledge for nefarious purposes. This is why we must embrace disruption in new technologies to stay one step ahead of our adversaries. Disruption is more chaotic for the entities unable to identi identify change and quickly adapt to it. Change is not coming. It has arrived and change is here to stay. I can see it, companies in the room can see it, and I know Ruben sees it as well. And my hope is that each of you not only see it, but we actively work together to get ahead of it. So what can we do? To industry, I know that you have revolutionary technologies and innovations that will empower us to be disruptors. However, I need you to keep stretching your imagination and keep formulating new questions and keep looking at the current and future problems with a new lens. I encourage you to keep asking what if and never get up on translating possibilities into opportunities. We cannot afford to be complacent nor passive in our quest 
for a better way. Success will not come to us. We must get to it. To the government, digital transformation will not wait for us. We must disrupt to exist. We must embrace new technologies as our partners. We must continually nurture our curiosity, rethink, reimagine, and redesign how we do business today by using technologies that they develop. It is essential that we eliminate our antiquated systems so that we can adopt new technologies before they become obsolete. Instead of thinking outside conventional boundaries, remove all the boundaries and embrace the new ideas with optimism. Challenge your thinking with provocative questions and always commit to finding a better answer. In the shadows, a battle is constantly waged to defend our nation's financial, healthcare systems, energy infrastructure, our democratic and national security institutions from those who wish to do us harm. The North Cyber Map provided a snapshot of cyber actors occurring across the globe. Every day, cyber actors are attempting to shut down power grids and access private medical records and steal financial data and obtain the latest defense technologies for economic gain and strategic advantage. Our very way of life is under attack and it is being seized by malicious actors. And many of you in the room took a solemn pledge to defend this country and that is your duty. And while some others did not take an oath, you have a moral responsibility to act as well. Bad actors will not discriminate between those who took a pledge and those who did not. And we are partners in doing the right thing for this country we all love. And if these were conventional kinetic attacks by foreign adversaries, everyone in this room would be rallying to our nation's defense. And cyber attacks should inspire the same contempt and outrage as a bullet or a missile fired at this country. And this should be personal for everyone in the room, and it is extremely personal to me. That regardless of whether you're in the government or private industry or whether you wear a uniform or a suit, it is your way of life and your family's way of life that are at stake. We must be successful in not just stopping cyber attacks, but in, in dominating them. We must effectively deploy transformational digital technologies with a speed and a flexibility to ensure that we continue to deliver on decision advantage for mission success. No one deserves the arrival of a casualty notification officer with a folded flag in their hand informing them the death of a loved one. Excelling at our jobs save lives. Our nation depends on it. Our agency depends on it. And our continued prosperity in existence depends on it. And it is a challenge at our, of our time to step up in this fight, to come together and resolve and to prevail in dominating the cyber domain. May God bless you and these United States of America. Thank you.